Jerry Monroe. Yes. You're here testifying on behalf of yourself. Yes. You are for the bill, is that correct? Yes. Proceed. How does a ballot harvester work? What do they do? Well, I tell you, I sat in a room and I watched some ballot harvesters take $22,000. Where you from, Mr. Monroe? I'm from Harris County. Where it's a kingmaker in Harris County, and his name is Commissioner Rodney Ellis. Now, the one thing, and I, I wish State Rep. Ron Reynolds was still here because we talk all the time. So every time I say something, <coughs> it tends to come true, and I feel like a prophet. I want you to understand something. I live in a poor black community, and the kingmakers have decided who they're going to put in office. They put them in office. They don't do anything for my community. So how they getting them in there? How they getting them in there? Mr. Ellis is as crooked as they come. You think I waited all day to hold my tongue? That's not going to happen. <laughs> Mr. Ellis is as crooked as they come. Sheila Jackson Lee is as crooked as they come. They all use the same teams. I filed multiple complaints for voter fraud. I'm listening to y'all debate about, well, will, will they take a, take a poll watch out of, out of, out of, out of voting area? Yes, they do. I was there when they took a poll watch out. He was an undercover police officer, poll watching on his day off. He caught them with the ID sitting on the counter. So when the car came through with the drive through voting and four people in the car didn't have an ID, they go inside and get them one. I know that you don't want to believe some of these things. Who is your team? I got a team better than the FBI. And I can find out anything. I'm not scared of Ellis, Boris Miles, Sheila Jackson Lee, none of them. They are robbing my community blind. Now, do I stand up here as just a constituent and as a taxpayer? No, I stand up here as a former candidate that got cheated with early ballots. How bad is this? One ballot harvester can affect an election with 80,000 votes. They charge $15 an hour. They can do 400 ballots a day and never leave their houses. Now, I know one of my reps is going to probably ask me, do you have evidence? I'd love to give it to you because I can't give it to my Democratic DA because she does nothing about it. My Democratic county attorney on a recording them in a third party consent state tells me I can't do anything about it because the county has no money. But we know you're telling the truth. So you're telling me you're letting people violate the law and you do nothing about it. But if I run a red light, I might be Sandra Bland. Oh, no, 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 no. It is your job to support this bill. It may not be what you want to do, but what they're doing in Harris County, I've never seen anything like it in my life. And more importantly, you might want to look at me because it's an important statement. According to an upper level official, Mr. Mr. Uh, Rodney Ellis, we gonna keep doing it because they punks and they ain't gonna do nothing about it. Now, I said it in an open forum. Why hasn't anybody filed a defamation of character lawsuit against me? I've been doing this nine years. HISD, you see, the, you don't even know that's me. When the people go up in their affairs, that's me. Because I'm sick of what I'm seeing. And my community is suffering. Because they're kingmakers. And they cheated in the last election. They called five constables on me when I showed up at a poll and asked, why did you remove that poll watcher when all he told you was your IDs are sitting on the counter? Why would you have a stack of IDs sitting on the counter when when I come in to vote, I, you take it, you run it through the machine, you give it back? No, they cheat. You know, I'm not, I always said this about Mr. Trump. I may not like everything about him, it's just his delivery. He's right on the money some days. 
And what they're doing in Harris County, you think they turn that county blue because them people been showing up to vote? I live in a black community. They don't come to the polls. They're playing with those early ballots in Harris County as well as Fort Bend County. That's why I wanted Ron to still sit there because I'll say it in his face. I've said it on the phone. Y'all have a grand opportunity to tighten it up. And whether they like me or not, you know, I'm an African-American. And I, I didn't leave the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party left me. They left me. I've been loyal. But I'm no longer going to keep my mouth shut. So if there's any evidence that you might need, I'd love to flood your office. I can deliver it in person. You want audio, video, what you want. Thank you, Mr. Monroe. Uh, members, are there any questions for Mr. Monroe? Uh, yes, ma'am. Chair recognizes Representative Swanson. Yes, I apologize for missing the, the beginning of your testimony. Yes, ma'am. I'm very interested in this. That's my county, but also you have such personal knowledge of this. And um, can you give us more details about the actual voter fraud that you have seen? When I ran for school board four years ago, I knew that the, the public wanted to see Gary Monroe versus Wanda Adams. That's all they wanted to see, based on the work that I'd done helping children in the school district. Five minutes after the polls closed, my race was over. She got 60% of the ballots. Hold on a second. This don't sound right. So being as inquisitive as I may be, I call my, my people. Look, we need to dig off into this. Now, when I say dig off into it, I got a way of finding out everything. And once we dug off into it, you had an influx of voters, 800 new Latinos in our area. She never went to a home association meeting. She never engaged my Latino community. But how did you get all 800 of those votes? How did you get them? So I started looking at other races. And everything started lining up. Now, I want you to understand, because I'm being honest with you. I've been offered $300,000 to shut my mouth. I don't want your money. I want you to stop what you're doing. And the thing is, we've caught them, like I say, with the removing the poll watchers, with the IDs sitting on the counters, in the room with the ballot harvesters, taking money, don't even know. We, we, we got you on everything. We recording you, we filming you, the whole nine yards. They have teams of ballot harvesters. One of them is called the Dream Team. The last time we heard of a Dream Team, we thought that was basketball. No, but this dream team, watch this, stay real. This dream team works for the district attorney, Commissioner Ellis. They work for Sheila Jackson Lee. They work for all of them. They all run in the same teams. Now, I found it strange that during the last election, I started raising my voice and one particular morning the dream team got fired from every campaign because I put your business out there I put your business out there and you slipped and when you slipped somebody came and jammed you up at work and took your phone when they took your phone you immediately ran to a politician's office we watching everything Every move you made, we got it. And I'm telling you, young lady, you, I love your tenacity. But this bill, it needs to be passed. It needs to go where it needs to go, and it needs to be passed. M members, I'm are, sorry. Are, are, folks out of the audience, <laughs> um, please, please try and refrain from clapping your applause. If you were in the gallery on the floor, the same thing would happen. Thank you. They are, they are destroying the African-American community because they are playing with our democracy. They get to decide who represents me. And if I decide I want to run, technically, and I'm being honest, this is what they say, 
you got to kiss the ring. I'm not kissing nothing. I'm not kissing nothing. I should be able to run for school board if that's what I choose to do. And I shouldn't have to get your permission to be able to do it. Now, I know they're going to be mad when I get back home, but they ain't got the heart to come in. They ain't got the heart, and you don't want to know why. Because I play dirty. If you decide you want to come at me, I'm going to take all this stuff I got in my war chest, and I'm going to drop it off on 290. It's a big turquoise building on 290 in Houston, and it's called the FBI. Yeah. And everybody and their mama going to go to jail. Now, it's a whole lot of voter fraud going on. Yeah. It's a whole lot going on from people not being able to, to wrongfully running in elections they shouldn't run in. They know all of this, yet they do nothing. Mm -hmm. Mr. Monroe, um, I'm sorry. No, you're doing great. Passion. I love your, <laughs> you You have some passion. We want to let you do it. Um, we just have a style here, but I, I, I appreciate your style. It's a breath of fresh air. Um, we just gonna, do you have any other questions, though? That's it. Unless he had any other actual details he wanted to say, that was my. I, I would be, I would be happy if I can get. A, I have a feeling I'm gonna get some more questions. If I can get a list of all these good people's names, mm -hmm. I will send you audio, video, everything. Now my state yeah. rep, which is one of the hardest working oh. guys, that 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 that's, on, that's in this building. I I love him. I didn't talk to him mm -hmm. about a lot of this stuff that I didn't see. I'm not shy. But I will say, he doesn't have that problem. He just wins. He does it the right way. But everybody in Harris County does not. So one person on a team of ballot harvesters, especially during early voting time, can affect those votes by no less than 80,000 votes. How many people on the Dream Team? 10. That's 800,000 votes. Yeah, it can be done. Uh, Mr. Monroe, may I ask a question? Have you given this evidence to the Attorney General's office? I gave the... No, I have not given it because I wanted to use my chain of command. I sent it to the Harris County District Attorney as well as the Harris County Attorney. And the first time I sent it, both of them, we never got it. I sent it certified mail. Okay, cool, I knew you were going to say that. So the next time I sent it, I sent it FedEx so I could track it so I know the time, the date, everything, you got it. And you still never responded, Madam DA. But the attorney, the Harris County attorney responded on a, and I got him recorded, and I even transcribed it. He says there's nothing he can do because they don't have the money, but we know you're telling the truth. Mm -hmm. You, did you say the, the election this happened in was a school board election? Is that correct? No, this right. happened in the last election. Okay, you saw on that as well. It, the, the, you, the, you had the, ran the in a school board. Is... Yeah, I ran for school board four okay. years ago. And so you, you're saying these things happen in all kinds of elections, nonpartisan, yeah. partisan, okay, local. Okay. Um, can you can you tell us about you seeing a watcher excluded from a polling place or something? Do you have anything to say on that? Yeah, I mean, that was the undercover officer. I was on the other side of town. Because on election day, I float, I do what I call floating the polls. I go to all the polls, as many as I can go to. So I get a call from the Northeast Community Center that they just kicked a poll worker, I mean a poll watcher, out of the, you know, out of the out of the voting center. Why? I'm on my way. So you don't want to know how fast I drove, but I made it there real fast. So I get there, I go in, I ask for the presiding judge. The lady comes out, what do you want? I want to know as a taxpaying citizen, why did you remove that poll watcher? Uh, because I could. Ma'am, unless he violated the law, you wasn't supposed to. She removed him because he was able, and she, she was so upset. He saw the ID sitting on the counter. He made a video of the ID sitting on the counter. And then he took a picture. When he took the picture, that's when she saw him, and she had the police officers escort him out. So when I got there, I'm asking questions as, as a taxpaying citizen. She calls five cars of constables on me, but I don't really care if you do, because I keep 10,000 on me at all times. You take me to jail, because I'm going to fight for what's right. And what you're doing in this building is not right. We asked the DA. 
to confiscate the cameras in the building. They didn't do nothing. Okay. Kim Og is a joke. Members, are there any other questions for Ms. Monroe? Uh, Representative Chiton. Thank you, Chair. How you doing? <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you got two members up here from Fort Bend County, and, and you had mentioned Fort Bend County specifically earlier on in this. Can mm -hmm. you give some specifics for what you witnessed in Fort Bend County? They plan, they plan in the senior citizen home, in the senior citizen buildings, with, with what I call old folks' home. This is where most of this ballot harvesting is done. And the thing is, I try to stay out of Fort Bend because I got a lot of respect for Ron, no matter what it may be. If I call on that state rep to help me with anything, he's always there. He's always there. So I try to stay up out of that. But the ones that's doing it, I'm not shy about calling your phone and telling you I got you. Now, I don't know if you can see his expression, but when I say I got them run, I normally have them. And they are playing in the senior homes, and this is how they playing with them early ballots. Okay, and, and so that, that complaint, did you happen to send that one to the no. Fort Bend DA no. or county? Fort Bend, Fort Bend was like a guppy to me compared to Harris County where the whales reside. <laughs> so I ain't had time to play with the guppies. I, I need to go over here and play with the whales. Now, whether... I'm being honest with you because it's, it's too much corruption in Harris County, and I'm being honest with you guys. According to that man, he don't care because you punks and you ain't going to do nothing about it. That's how he feels. But my problem with it is, is I pay taxes. And I want representation because you taxing me. I'm tired of these Negroes running around here acting like they kingmakers. You get to choose if, if Miss if, if if Beckley wants to run. Oh, well, she ain't the right one. Let her run. It don't matter how much money she spend. On top of that, to answer your question, they leaving votes in the machines. What you mean they leaving votes in the machines? If they feel like a race is going to go to a runoff and it's you two guys and they want you to win, they want they want Mr. Uh, Schofield to win, they're going to leave two, three hundred votes in the machine. So when the runoff starts, Mr. Busey already behind two, three hundred votes. Oh, we got video of, the, of you bringing the machines in after the elections in different places that they shouldn't be. Now, I don't know if y'all really want to attack this beast because you're going to have to arrest a lot of people. Sir, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just finish off my time with... I'm sorry. I, I, would, I would suggest submitting those that evidence to the Secretary of State. I can submit it. I'm, I'm going to tell you and something, I would, my I would ask. I would escalate it at this point if you have that evidence. I, I was in Minneapolis two days ago because <laughs> George went to school where I went to school. And I flew from Minneapolis to come here. And tomorrow I gotta fly back to Minneapolis. If I need to come back and deliver it in each one of your hands, I can do that. I'm not gonna waste your time, but I need this bill to pass. Stop letting them treat you the way that they treat me. And they don't care if you're a Democrat. It's about money. It's just about money. So when they say you punks, they talking about anybody that has a problem with this bill. And as an African-American, we can't keep supporting criminals, knowing that they full-fledged criminals. Now, I know they're watching. You know, I'm sorry. I'm on my way home if y'all want to talk to me when I get there. <laughs> I'm not scared of them. I'm being honest. I'm sick of them, and it's time out for it. I want you to think about how many African-Americans that stood at this podium today with the same mind frame of passing this bill. It's time out for it. Stop playing with my democracy. If I choose to vote for somebody, I choose to vote for them. And that should be the end of that. It's not about black. It's not about white. It's really not about Republican or Democrat. It's about money. And the kingmaker down there, I'm not going to stop until I put them cuffs on Mr. Ellis. Thank you, Ms. Monroe. Members. Yes, ma'am. Representative Beckley, you're recognized. Well, well he, keeps saying, he keeps looking at me and pointing, so I just want to say for the record, I'm in Denton County. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. I got a, we'll I had a, order. for a long time, I had a, 
I guess you could call it a summer vacation home right there in Frisco. So I was always up in Dallas, too. They're doing the same thing in Dallas. <laughs> they doing the same thing in Dallas. They running the same playbook all over the state of Texas. And I might lose some friends, but I don't care. I don't have that many anyway. It doesn't matter to me. But I apologize. Yes, ma'am. Members, any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Monroe. Brother Monica de la Cruz Hernandez, you are here representing yourself and you are for the bill. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Thank May you. I take this off? You, yes, and you may proceed with your testimony. Excellent. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Um, as he said, my name is Monica de la Cruz Hernandez, and I was a candidate in the 2020 election, and I will be a candidate in the 2022 election. So I have a vested interest in the success and the integrity of our elections, and specifically the mail-in ballots that is happening here. You see, I am in the county of Hidalgo, and to share with you where Hidalgo is, is we are in the southernmost tip of Texas, right on the border, McAllen, Texas. Unfortunately, ground zero for illegal, and I'll say that again, illegal border immigration. That being said, um, I am obviously Hispanic. My district is 86% his Hispanic, and Hidalgo County is over 90% Hispanic. I'm here to testify about our mail-in ballot applications and the importance of protecting the integrity, preserving the integrity of our mail-in ballot boxes, and punish those who don't uphold the current election. You know, uh, Mr. Monroe, who was here behind me, I have a dream team too. And you're about to hear about our dream teams here in Hidalgo County. On August 18th, Hidalgo County commissioners, led by County Judge Richard Cortez, discussed and approved the Elections Department to send out an application for ballot by mail to all people over age 65 to all over age 65 registered voters excuse me using taxpayer dollars now why this should alarm you is because on september 30th the texas supreme court this is the texas supreme court the state of texas versus chris hollins in his official capacity at harris county the county clerk concluded that we hold that the election code does not authorize an early voting clerk to send an application to vote by mail to a voter who has not requested one and that ha and that a clerk doing so results in irreparable injury to the state. Well, let me tell you that the Hidalgo County Elections Administrator, Yvonne Ramon, failed failed to uphold the Texas Supreme Court ruling and she mailed out mailed out unsolicited mail-in ballot applications to all registered voters over the age of 65. What are the repercussions when we have leaders and city officials in our counties that are not upholding current law and upholding what our Texas Supreme Court rulings are? If we don't have them upholding our current law, what makes us think that our citizens are going to uphold and respect that law? That being said, in Hidalgo County, we had between 2018 and 2020 a 240 Five percent increase in mail-in ballots, 245 percent. Some of y'all might be saying, well, great, that's great, right? People are voting. Well, let me tell you some of the anomalies that happened because of this. If you go down ballot in Hidalgo County, there the congressman, uh, Vicente Gonzalez, had a higher percentage of votes than the Biden-Harris ticket. How does that happen? You all have been in here long enough in enough elections to know that if you go down ballot, the, ba the, the votes go down and down and down. But here this congressman got more votes, a higher percentage of votes than the Biden-Harris ticket. What's even more, uh, what's even more Go ahead. I know that. That's fine. I, I have a feeling you you may be able to get that uh, answer into something. But thank you for respecting the clock. By the way, Absolutely. if you'll see it, the the yellow light when you hear that first beep is 30 seconds remaining, and then the red um, is the end of your time. Members, are there any questions? Representative, I would Fonsi. be greatly interested to hear the rest of that story. 
Yes. So what? <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that because what is, as we all know, and all of y'all have been in an election, it goes down ballot. The president always gets the highest and then it goes down, down and down. When you go down the ballot, what you see is that the Democrat candidates all had about 13,000 absentee votes, even when unopposed even when unopposed, and they only varied by about 200 votes, whether they were opposed or not. So the question is, why is this? How can this anom anomaly happen? It doesn't make sense. And so when we talk about mail-in ballot fraud, we really need to do, and what we really need to look at is the integrity of these mail-in ballots. This is a serious subject, and when you do a case study in Hidalgo, you will see over and over and over again that sadly we have a dream team too. And I'll be happy to give you information with Mr. Monroe, but I have a feeling your offices will be very flooded. <laughs> I would like to make one more comment. Um, I, I am just shocked with, since we did away with the one touch or one punch, whatever you want to call it, straight ticket voting, then it's just absolutely impossible that you would not have a huge drop off as, as you go down the ballot in the total number of votes. And, and especially when someone was unopposed, there are huge numbers of people who don't bother to vote in those races. So with no straight ticket voting, that, that's just impossible. So something's wrong there. So let me share with you, the Justice 13th Court of Appeals, the Democrat received 12,578 votes. Nine people down from that race was the sheriff race. And the sheriff Democrat received 13,534. How does that make sense? So 13 Court of Appeals at 12,578 absentee, nine races below that race, 13,000, more mail-in ballots. And when we talk about a dream team, we can look at who the campaign managers are for some of these elections. And interestingly enough, they all have about the same amount of mail-in ballots. Wow, thank you for your testimony and for being so involved there. Any other questions? Members, any questions for this witness? None? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your time. <laughs> I got your name is Rolando Rodriguez, Latinos for America First. Yes, sir. So you're representing, you are for this bill. I am, yes. Okay. You, you may proceed. Thank you. Uh, well, I, before reading my testimony, I just want to mention that uh, this is my first time ever working in an election process and uh, that I am very happy of doing it. And it's an honor and it's a pleasure uh, doing this for our country. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Rolando Rodriguez. I am here today on behalf of Latino for America First and I am from the Rio Grande Valley and I am in favor of HB. Uh, six. I took my son Roldan Rodriguez to the polling place to be a poll watcher. I went inside with him since um, it was his first time participating. Immediately the judge told him to go to the corner, you know, far away corner there uh, of the room and also told him that he could not go outside. She also told him that if he would go outside the room, he could not come back after five hours. Immediately, I told this lady that she wasn't right, that he could go outside and uh, cross the 100 feet line to make a phone call if he witnessed something wrong. She replied to me and said, no, he cannot go outside. If he does, he cannot come back after five hours. He re she repeated uh, that to me. Finally, uh, I told this lady that I was coming back in about an hour. I had to drive about 10 miles. I went to our GOP office to get the actual instructions and I highlighted exactly where it says that a poll watcher can make a phone call if necessary. Then I drove back to the polling place and uh, give her the instructions. And then she, uh, she said, well, he can go outside as long as, as he doesn't take long doing the call. I don't know why she made me drive 
20 miles back and forth. And uh, she wasn't very nice either. Uh, I know one thing, in the Rio Grande Valley, this is the first time Democrats have opposition in over 100 years. And thank God we were able to do that in a few months. Myself, with my friends, Demesio and Juan Manuel, and many other patriots, and we almost turned the valley red, working hard these past few months. And I believe that maybe why this lady and almost every judge from the whole county, they were not happy. And uh, for me, you know, it was first time learning experience for me. And um, since all the people, most of the people, you know, now from the whole Rio Grande Valley knows me and my friends because of the Trump caravans, we are the creators of the Trump trains and uh, we became kind of famous. So all these people, you know, started coming to me, hey, Rolando, uh, I, my, this was my experience, you know, at the polling place. Well, Jersey, before our UOP office, it was almost closed, you know, no people there. But since we started the caravans, we started having, thank God, lots of patriots and uh, we changed the, the valley. Anyway, um, uh, we, because of our movement, we were able to send almost at least one poll watcher to every polling place. And this is the first time in history. So all these people came back to me and told me what they witnessed. And, um, and it's not good. In the first time for me participating in an election process, I, find, I found out uh, what they've been doing for years. And uh, that's why I am in favor of age uh, B6. We need to protect our voting uh, process with integrity. So I thank you all for for this uh, brief looking. Thank you. And uh, yeah, they came with this, uh, you know, they were shocked because many of them, they were kicked out from the, uh, from being, you know, from their duty, being uh, as being poll watchers. And um, many came to me and told me, hey, why so many people comes to the curbside with rental cars? And uh, mm. yes, and many other stories. Is my time, my time over or what? You'll, you'll be able to say more because we'll ask you questions if oh. you'd like to. Rest up. Well, let me just mention a few, couple of more things here. Uh, you probably get to say it when we ask you questions, I promise. Okay. Yeah. Um, how about this one? Ms. Rodriguez, it sounds like you have more to say. Could you tell me some of the things on your notes there? Excuse me? <laughs> Excuse me? You, could you tell me some other things? It sounds like you had okay. something to tell me. Yeah. Uh, one of the things, uh, we have a mayor, the city of Far, Mr. Ambrosio Hernandez. He went to the polling place, to one of the po polling places in his city, with these people from an organization called La Lupe, which for me is nothing like a socialist organization, really. That's what they look like. He goes there with a big cooler of hot tacos to give to all the people in line, you know, that went to vote. Okay. That's and, legal in Texas. And they, and they crowd that 100 feet yard line. Mm -hmm. They were okay. almost inside. Yeah. And he's the mayor of the city. But it's electioneering. Uh, speak to fraud. Could you could you tell me? Do you have any examples of uh, of unlawful assistance or things that you think were a problem or or election fraud? Um, what 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 we have is what we did is uh, we called all the poll watchers. They came to our GOP office, mm -hmm. and uh, we have lots of affidavits. You know, and and we okay. we do have them. Yeah. Oh, thank you, members. Are there any questions for Mr. Rodriguez? The chair recognizes Representative Swanson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you for, for coming. It sounds like you have a great deal of evidence and um, I'd like to hear any more stories. I was particularly interested in what you said about many people showing up in rental cars. Can you elaborate on that? Well, uh, the people that we send out as poll watchers, that, that, that was their experience in different areas of the county. 
That's what they came back and told me. But you know what? I'm going to give a chance to our, my friends here. I think one of them that is here. He experienced personally something like that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Juan Manuel Gonzalez. Members, any other questions for Ms. Rodriguez? Rodriguez, thank you. No, I started, well, I started with Latino for Trump, then now we, Bianca, with Bianca, and now we are a Latino for I've been looking for a spot to let people know the first election I lost was her precinct chair. And so, <laughs> the guy three, day, three doors down beat me. He deserved it. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you. Very kind. Okay, did any of the people whose names I called come in? Come on up, James. Slattery, have you down as representing Latinos for America, and you are for the bill. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Feel free to proceed with your testimony, sir. <clears throat> um, okay. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you because uh, you've been working overtime, long hours, uh, as, as we have, right? So, uh, presumably, everybody is tired and now with the great sense of humor by this time of the, of the night, right? Or, or now you are smiling, you have a still great sense of humor. All right, um, I became a um, long ago uh, naturalized citizen and um, I got involved uh, the last uh, election cycle and um, I'm, I'm impressed of uh, how <clears throat> How inclusive. I, I, I found found myself of a a lot of people maybe see me as a brown uh, as, as a brown guy, right? Sure. As uh, I've been referred to, to Hispanic uh, people. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I find Texas nothing but a very inclusive. I, I came to Texas 11 years ago. I spent most of my life in California. And uh, <clears throat> so, People refer that, uh, actually I have some people from California ask me whether uh, I found racism in, in, in Texas discrimination. I said, not me, I don't know, you know. So I was thinking er, er, for a couple of people that came in and uh, talk about uh, uh, against the, the bill. And they talk about uh, races and color of the skins and this and that, and I said, man, I don't know where they live, but, you know, but as far as I'm concerned, Texas is very, very inclusive. All right, um, I participated uh, very, very briefly in, in the last elections as a poll watcher, and uh, I was kicked out of the out of the polls even before the, the voting is, uh, process started, all right? Um, we're supposed to start, uh, the voting supposed to start at seven, and it was about 8.30, 8.45, and, and the system was still not uh, um, started, so I started working, right? So I went out and sit out on a bench, uh, kind of resting, it's, it's being standing up for hour and uh, hour 30 years is kind of hard, right? So I went and sit on a bench, and uh, a lady came and sat on the bench with me and started talking to me, and so I replied more than anything else by courtesy, right? The, the, um, the presiding judge saw me and she said, you're out. She kicked me out and I said, hey, wait a minute. We haven't started voting. She said, no, you, you just disqualify yourself and, and, and you're out of here. So I left, but my point, the point that I wanna make is uh, there is some overpowering in abuse, abuses uh, in the I, I didn't let you guys know, but I am come from RGV, from the Rio Grande Valley area. And it's a de democratic stronghold for the last uh, 100 years plus, okay? And so there are some, a lot of uses and, and, uh, and uh, the judges, uh, mainly Democrats, uh, do whatever they wanna do and they try to get rid of us as, as soon as possible. Any questions? Uh, uh, thank you, sir. And I, and I do want to make clear um, that I don't think the members on this committee are concerned with the party identification of the actors. We're more concerned with whether or not they're following the rules or allowing people to vote or anything like that. And so, uh, it just 
as an FYI. Members, do you have any questions for this witness? Uh, thank you so much. Very, very important testimony. Thank you. The chair now calls Susan Fountain. I am Demetria Smith. I am testifying for myself as a voter, and I am for the bill. Thank you. Please provide your testimony. Thank you. So uh, my approach may be a little different, and the reason why it's different is because I am sick and tired of seeing the narrative change from the real intent of this bill. The real intent of this bill, and I read all 22 pages of the bill, myself as a voter to educate myself to see what was really going on. And the reason why I came here, I fought myself. But nationally, Democrats, and I'm going to have to call it, Democrats are making this bill to be a Jim Crow 2.0 voter suppression bill across the nation. I'm black. At least that's what they call me. But it is not a Jim Crow 2.0. It's election accountability Super Accountability 2.0. And that's what we need. When the wicked rule, the people shall mourn. But when the righteous rule, the people shall rejoice. And this bill is time for the people to rejoice to put the right people in place. And let me tell you something about the little Jim Crow. So I, the reason why I want the black base to understand, I want the black base to know that Democrats are playing on our emotion. They wanted you out there to create chaos. They want you out there to burn down buildings. They want you out there flip flipping over cars. They want to play on your emotion. But here's my problem with that. When I look at Democrats attacking my emotion, you're going after my ancestors. You go, I'm a descendant of my ancestors. But now you're making a mockery. You're making a mockery of my suffrage. And you use it to your advantage for your own agenda so you can keep your own seat. It's not about the people. And everybody that came here, before me, after me coming here talking about the poll watchers. They're attacking the poll watchers. Poll watchers don't have anything to do with it. We need whistleblowers. And we need real enforcements. So right now, the poll watchers now have been under attack. And when I see Democrats coming up here talking about ele attacking election integrity, they're attacking election integrity. They're attacking the accountability. And when you have Democrats attack, attack, attacking accountability, where is their democracy? Do they even really believe in their democracy. I want to say one last thing on the Jim Crow. Baby, this ain't no Jim Crow bill because back in the day when I read a boy, you have to pay poll taxes. There's no poll taxes in this bill. And back in the day when I read, you have to be a property owner. There's no property ownership in this bill. Back in the day I read, you have to be grandfather in. You don't have to be grandfather in in this bill. So back in the day I read, it was mostly white Democrats was always winning and black folks couldn't participate. So with that being said, they can lose the Jim Crow 2.0 and keep this bill on the right track. Keep the state law, all the felony criminal crimes, federal de uh, third degree, keep all those penalties in there. Because let me tell you the good news I saw coming up in here. Everybody came here, they can't even sleep at night. They're going to go back home rolling and tossing. They're going to be making them phone calls to them state representatives. I can't get them moving on this bill because they're not comfortable. The bill haven't even passed and they already been deterred. So keep this this bill pushing. All right, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you, Ms. Smith, for that very, very emotional, passionate presentation. Let's do try to contain our emotional outburst, but you did kind of bring it out in them. I won't say that. In fact, in fact, if this was campaign season, I'd suggest that was a good time to pass the plate. And so, but, but uh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. You spoke for the heart. That's what we want to hear. Uh, Ms. Smith, thank you for your testimony. Members, do we have any questions? Uh, Mr. Schofield. Ms. Smith, my, my district's out west in Katy. What part of, of Houston are you from? West Houston. Oh, you are? Yes. See, these are, these are my people. Uh. And I just got to say, if you notice, members, the most passionate testimony you've heard today has come from Harris County. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Time. The last thing, the Republican passed the Civil Rights Bill. The Democrats filibustered it for seven, seven, 77 days. They didn't want you to have voting rights. 
Ty. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's, we've been uh, doing such a great job with our decorum. Uh, and so let's move on. I think we have a, a question to the left here, uh, Representative Swanson. I just want to say to and the... Uh, uh, yeah, if, if you're not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, I'm sorry I wasn't in here yet, but I was in my office, and you have a powerful testimony, and we appreciate you coming up here. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you all. Be blessed. Push that bill. Pass. Good. I, I think uh, Representative Florence has been risen from the dead. So uh, good to get you back in here. Valerie. All right, so Dylan, any other questions, members? Okay, great. Then I'm going to look for, let me call on these names for. Uh, thank you, Chair. I appreciate your testimony. Uh, sorry, I missed the first part of that. Um, but uh, as, a, as a Korean mother, or a Korean, <laughs> Korean American, my mother immigrated here from Korea and uh, went through that same process of becoming a citizen and um, did, did get engaged in the election system. And I, I know a lot of people in the Asian community that you know, it, it's more of our custom to just, you know, do our work and go about our lives and not worry about the election process and the, you know, the, the, the government component of this whole thing. And, uh, and so I, I agree with you, and I, I understand that we need to get more of the Asian community to come out and vote. Um, I, I can tell you as a joint author, author of this bill, th this, the, the things that we need to do to maybe address but registration and some of these other things are not things that we want to address in this bill. I think that what we're trying to address in this is making sure that if your mother was able to vote on that this last election cycle and when she eventually does, we're protecting that vote. And we're making sure that it's not stolen by ballot harvesting or stolen by um, someone attempting to assist her um, and not allowing her to vote the way that she wants to on there. And so. I, I I completely agree, and I, I hope you understand that's that's the intent of this bill is to protect protect people's votes, and so. I understand that's the intent of the bill. I worry about the actual unintended consequences and the fear that will be created by not allowing people to assist others when they're voting. People with disabilities, people like my mother with issues with language access. So I think I, I just urge you to look carefully at this bill and, and make sure that you're protecting the rights and, and, and not creating more fear around voting for, sure. for immigrants, especially in our Asian American Sure, and I, and, I, and, I, and I understand that concern. And one of the, you know, one of the stories that we continue to hear about the assistant in the polls <laughs> is the abuse where someone offers to take them in to assist them with voting. And when they're done voting, they, they didn't get to vote the way that they wanted to. And so we're trying to avoid that abuse. And so by having a form, by having the oaths, using the oaths to where it's more um, more understanding of the fact that you can't you can't steal someone else's vote. Um, that that's the intent of this is to protect people like your mom from having that vote stolen from them. And so I just wanted to share that to make make sure it's kind of understood that that's the intent of this bill. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. I, I appreciate that. I, I just hope that you look at the impact of the bill and not just the intent. Thank you, Representative Jatan. Uh, other questions, uh, Representative Fier. Mr. Gonzalez, what I'm going to do upon your introduction, I'm going to yield the chair back to Mr. Kane. Uh, but if you could please, you've heard the drill. Your name, who you represent. Uh, actually, I'm going to have four questions for you. Your name, who you represent, your position on the bill. And then personally, I'd like to know where you got that hat. Mexico. Uh, hi. Mexico. Let's, let's answer the first three questions for the record. Thank you. Okay. My name is Juan Manuel Gonzalez. And I'm here on behalf of the Latinos for, for America, first, and because as a, as a poll watcher from Rio Grande Valley, also I witnessed many things that, in my opinion, were not right in a democratic voting process. And, and Plus, sir, I also are you, support... Are you, for, are, you, are you for, against, or on the bill? Plus, I also support HB6. There you go. Sorry to cut you off. Please proceed. Thank you. <laughs> for example, when I was stationed inside, I was told by the judge to sit in a corner by the voting area, by the voting area, and told that I had to sit there and not leave for a minimum of five hours. While sitting there, I witnessed several voters that would ask for help. These guys walked in and would stand by, by the voting machine and look around and say, I need help. Wow. And then it was either a young lady or a young man that would come out and stand by them. And I don't know what they did because I was sitting way off. 
Also, when my friend and another poll watcher came to relieve me, I went outside to my GOP pop-up tent and witnessed two different cars with paper plates. And in South Texas, they're called los politiqueros or politiqueras. These are people that go and bring people to vote. On intervals, they had three to four people in their car. The guy would come out from inside with a bucket they all threw their IDs in there, never checked to see if somebody was in the car that looked like the ID. Went out, brought the, the, the little uh, portable machine and was handed into them. And the guy stood out there. And most of the time I could see him, I would pass it to the driver, which is the politiquero, politiquera. And they would proceed to do the, the voting. Then after they finished, a big tent with a lot of barbecuing going on, would, you know, that would come up, a guy would say, well, how many plates? I didn't hear him, but he would come back with three, four, six plates into the car. And then they would leave. I should do like uh, somebody we know that hands this to somebody to read it. <laughs> instead of following my own handwriting. I witnessed the driver in the voting procedures. Before they finished, the person would approach the car and you know, do all that. So what I'm saying is, after a while, the same cars would bring other people. And they had paper plates, not to be identifiable. They had paper plates on their cars. And this, according to some people that I befriended, became friends with, they were Democrats, Democrats because they didn't like me. They said, this is Democrat country, get out of here. They didn't like me there with my uh, uh, other signs that I had there. And I guess they respected me a little bit because of my white hair. <laughs> so, and in the car, I didn't see people with a lot of white hair. Just like the guys that were inside that didn't know what they were doing. They spoke both languages and uh, another person would stand by them and do all that yeah. punching and there. M Mr. Gonzalez, um, it's okay. The, the time's up, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hear some more from you. Can, okay. you, can you tell me? You, you began by telling me. You, so you were a poll watcher. Yes. And you you so you were excluded from doing your job. What happened? Correct, because I was told to sit. That was where I was supposed to be stationed. Who told you to sit down? The judge. Wow. I wish you had testified just for the last witness. Um, did you, were you? I had assigned? an assigned place to, to be at. Yeah, but they made you sit down. You weren't able to move or observe. Correct. What is your understanding of what a poll watcher is supposed to do? Observe. Yeah. And uh, make sure that nobody comes up and does what they were doing. Mm -hmm. You know, because you this, you this, pers this person would just come in, but because it's my first time doing this, you know, I, I felt intimidated and not wanted to be coerced or, or allowed to be to leave yeah. I'm sorry that happened to you thank you members uh, any other questions chair recognizes representative Schofield Mr. Gonzalez thank you for being here and for, for waiting this late since last night <laughs> did I hear you say uh, when you when the politicare has brought up uh, drove a voter to the polls which in, it, in and of itself is legal mm -hmm. that the election workers handed the the voting apparatus use an iPad or whatever laptop, it's to yeah. use to the politiquera rather than the people that are supposed to be the voters? The politiquero or politiquera was driving. Right. They have three, sometimes four people in there and it would be handed over. I could see that it would be handed over a lot of times not all the time. You, you witnessed with your own eyes yes. the politiquero or politiquero doing the voting rather than the voters. Correct. It would be handed. And the person that handed the, the laptop, whatever it's called, again, it's my first time doing this, uh, would just stand out there and wait. And then he would get, take it back inside, bring it back out yeah. with the other IDs.
I mean, that, that sounds exactly like the kind of illegal assistance that we've been talking about all night. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to come up here and, and tell us that, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Fierro. Mr. Gonzalez, thank you for your testimony. Just so I can understand, when I heard you say that they grabbed the iPad, the voting machine, back iPad, to, yes. and handed it through to the person who was going to vote, Mr. Schofield asked you if the person driving was the one who voted on the machines. A few times, yes. I saw so, it. But, but, so a few times. Yes. Because the minute I heard you say he handed them, then Mr. Schofield asked you, and you said, no, he did, and now it's a few times. Yes, a few okay. times. Okay. No, no, because just, other sure times, you know, it, would, it wouldn't be handed over. Okay. But a few times I did see. I said I didn't hear that the first two times. I'm sorry. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. <laughs> Members, any other questions for Mr. Gonzalez? Mr. Gonzalez, by the way, I, I see you're from West Laco. Yes. Travel a long way. Thank you. Yes. Have you been to the Capitol before? Uh, when I was very young. Well, welcome back to your Texas Capitol. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. It was in my high school. <laughs> very young. Long time ago. That's neat. Uh, Thank you.